So presently I'm really feeling the scratch bash crafty side of things, which aligns me perfectly with how goblins think. They build their stuff from leftovers, trash, bit of wood, string, more stuff, and some tech. There's no specific shopping list for this. Depending what you have lying around, that could easily be enough to get you started with this project. But it's probably safe to say that I bought all of this at some point or another for less than the price of a single piece of GW terrain. So fair play. And the trick here is to think and build like a goblin. How do goblins think and build? I, I don't know, because they're not real. I guess. Japanese hobby tools, man. They just go that little bit further. But we aim for a shape that we want with a piece of material that we have literally in our hand. And if it doesn't work, we stick more things over it to make it work. You're probably looking at this like I am and thinking, well, that's just some shit glued together. That's because we're not thinking like goblins yet. So what do we do to shore up these joints? Uh, we wrap a load of rope around them. Yeah, that's safe. And that's goblin. To add some support both to our model and from a goblin construction aesthetic mindset, we're adding iron banding to our corners and joints. I see this on a lot of old corner buildings around York, just big strips of iron around the building with nails rammed through it. So we stick those on, a nice little bit of smooth surface breaker. It's going to add character and it's going to help add some scale. One of the tricks with smaller stuff like this and trying to achieve a scaled sense of size to it is to just keep adding detail. These are some cool little street lamps that I was sent by Daffith at Terraintronics and I'm going to use some flickering LEDs to create an oil lamp. And to house the battery and wires, I'm going to hobble together a little goblin crate to keep everything hidden and secure. What's up guys, Tony D here, back in perpetual forward motion, and I'm here to talk to you today about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I don't know about you guys, but when I used to build a website, I used to have goblins in the system, messing with my feng shui. But with a Squarespace, that's a thing of the past. The smooth moves from the super friendly browser based interface means you're never gonna run into trouble while making the website of your dreams run super clean. And with Squarespace's 24-hour a day, 7-day-a-week customer service and tech support, those goblins are a thing of the past. But Tony, I hear you say, forget about tech support. This is the first website I ever built. What do I do? Well, my friend, that's easy. Squarespace comes with so many user-friendly templates that you can select the one you like and just add your own personal touch to make the website your own. <laughs> I'm not kidding guys, once you get signed up to Squarespace, you could be making your own website and have something ready to put online within the first 10 minutes. Crazy! And it wouldn't be Tony time without mentioning the Domain Acquisition tab. This thing lets you find a domain name you like, 
lets you know the availability and the pricing for a year subscription, and you can attach it to your web page or within one browser tab. It's just that easy, guys. It's just that easy. So come on down to the Squarespace website and Emporium, where we've got squares and spaces by the website for. Once again, add in more iron banding, but this time with some turkey foil. If I could find my hobby chain, I'd be adding some chain railings here as well, but I suppose you can't win them all. Our second barricade is going to be even more ramshackled with rough hewn pieces of balsa wood, coffee stirrers and barbecue sticks. trying to make all these pieces completely freestanding without any bases you know i like bases but i always have issues with making the edges flush and flat enough to sit on a tabletop and you know also being strong enough so that they don't fall apart at the edges i also think taking this approach is going to help these sit better on any tabletop whether it's moonstone warhammer 40k or age of sigma The third barricade is going to be made from the remains of a fallen stone wall or building. Whatever this used to be, it's now creative fodder for some barricade hungry goblins. We're going to add a couple of new pieces to this guy, mainly a goblin washing line, of course, and some iron railing spikes. These spikes are made from these fancy kids party arrowhead cocktail stick things. No idea what they're actually called, but I saw them and immediately knew I need a hundred of those. For that washing line, because goblins need to dry their clothes too, just some loose twine wrapped around each post. And then super glued all the way along to make it solid and secure. cheeky trick for orky and goblin rivets bolts screws whatever take a tiny tiny cocktail stick glue it to the point where you want the rivet to be wait for it to dry and then clip it off we've got a goblin shirt and a pair of comfy slacks on there and we're going to add some animal hide as extra pieces of interest. I use craft paper for this because when ripped, the edges develop kind of a new texture that's different to the actual main texture. After a once over with a tin foil ball, these pieces are ready for a gloss medium and black paint prime. This protects the foam from the solvent primers. Of course, I don't have any black primer, so these guys are getting a prime with a shade of boys grey, followed by a coat of Poundland Black. 
I'm then going to apply my pre-shading with the dick slap technique. You can do this next phase by just throwing on diluted washes or weak contrast paint. These kind of projects lend themselves to unifying colours and kind of painting almost backwards. I'm using Army Painter Speed Paint straight through an airbrush using greens and browns, not in any particular pattern or plan, since anything left long enough in a swamp kind of takes on the same swampy hue anyway. Really, it's just about adding a smidge of variety to the highlighted areas and keeping it looking organic. Electronics wise, I'm just using a CR2032 battery, a battery clip that I got off Amazon, and a wire wrap tool to put it all together. Thanks again to Terraintronics for teaching me this wire wrap trick. I'm garbage with a solder and iron and this method is so painless and holds up really well. And there we go guys, perfectly fun and easy to make goblin barricades. These took a whole day to do, start to finish, and they'll sit perfectly with my upcoming Moonstone themed content. Big love as always to my amazing patron community who've just drawn names in the annual MS Paint Secret Santa. Big thanks and love to Mr. Redcoat for organizing that and I can't wait to see you know, in the big call that we do near Christmas, we're going to unbox everything. And we're going to see how happy or maybe unhappy everyone is with the cool stuff that they bought for each other. Cheers. I'm out of here.